Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be Holy God's fire! The first dimension of relationship you must focus on, if you desire relationships to be a tool that open the doors of destiny, is your relationship with God. Matthew chapter 22, please. Give us from verse 37. We are reading to 40. Your relationship with God. In that order, Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, help me, with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Next verse. It says, Then thou, sh this is the first and great commandment. 39. It says, The second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as yourself. 40 now. On these two hang all the law and the prophets. That means every, every law that ever came by the prophets. The dictates for the nation of Israel was to get them to achieve these two things. The love for God and the love for men. Are we together now? Your relationship with God. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26. A scripture that has become an anthem in my own life. My son, it says, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. This is God asking not just for your tight. Asking not just for your offering, no, asking not just for your membership. He's looking for your heart. Are we together now? My son, he says, give me your heart and then let my eyes observe your ways. Second Chronicles 15. Second Chronicles chapter 15 from verse 12. We're reading 12 to 15. The first dimension of relationship that makes for open doors as far as as life and destiny is concerned is your relationship with God the Bible says and they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their mind verse 13 that whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death whether small or great whether man or woman 14 and they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting and trumpets and cornets the last verse now and all judah rejoice at the oath they bound themselves with an oath to seek the lord for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire is that in your bible and he was found of them what was the result and the lord gave them rest round about not just because they were intellectually sound not just because they were um, educationally advantaged or sociologically advantaged they had wealthy parents the Bible says they bound themselves corporately with an oath that we will seek the Lord and that anybody that violates this will put that person to death whether child whether adult whether male or female that when God saw the seriousness of their heart to seek him with their everything he gave them rest round Are we learning? Hmm. Matthew 19, 26. Very powerful scripture. I know you've read it, but I want you to look at it very carefully. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men, this is impossible, but with God. Everybody say, with God. God. There are things that are only possible with God with God with God all things are possible this is the implication of a healthy relationship with God it defines the extent of the possibilities that you experience do not make a mistake of believing that just because you are saved it means every possibility will manifest in your life automatically no every possibility should manifest as far as the finished work of Christ is concerned. But entering into the experience of it depends on a functional, ever-growing relationship with God. Let me tell you the truth. There is nothing in this life, there is no one in this life, please listen very carefully, 
that should sustain the ability to take the place of God in your life and to interrupt your work with God. Anybody that succeeds to do that is the person you should worship because that person has become God. And the jealousy of God will fight anything and anyone that stands his way, even if he's the one that gave you that blessing. I hope you know God can fight what he gave you. The moment what he gave you becomes an interruption to his place and his purposes in your life, it becomes his enemy, just like Satan. God created Satan and he still grants us the grace to perpetually defeat him. He's not forgotten that Satan is his creation. But because Satan has assumed a position where he perpetually cannot bring joy to God again, even though God's creation, it does not secure God's support again. It's important for you to know that God does not just initiate processes. He vets them periodically to find out that he's being glorified through them. And if he stops being glorified through those processes, his, his backing ceases except by the mercy of God. So you will find many people being destroyed by what God gave them. And you'll be wondering, how could God give you a blessing that becomes a destruction? Saul, how could God make you a king? And yet that position brings you shame and reproach again. How could you be the anointed cherub that covereth a position God gave you? And yet your pride came as a result of that position. Just because God gave you does not mean it to automatically glorify him. You have to be intentional about using everything around your life to see that Jesus is glorified. Are we together now? Thou shall love the Lord your God. Please look up. There are many believers today who ignore the issue of having a healthy relationship with God. When you say it like this, most believers think it is just a press into fanatism. And they say, you know what, the way me, I serve God. I'm not into all these Jim Jim Christianity, but my own. God knows that me, I'm serious. You can never fake seriousness. Seriousness is, is so palpable, it should be known and detected, whether from afar and near. I'm not, I'm prayerful. It's just that it's only God that knows. You are a liar immediately. Are we together now? Yes, sir. So many believers do not intend to take God seriously. They don't, they don't plan to throw him out of their lives, but they just want to keep him just at the minimum level enough to hopefully secure life after death in case, like an insurance, while they go around doing everything they want to do with their lives. And let me tell you the truth, ladies and gentlemen, if you want God to honor you, you want to command power and relevance in our world today in order of priority. This has nothing to do with Pentecostalism or whatever it is. You have to make up your mind. Please listen carefully. Make up your mind that you are going to go all out for God. Some of us, when we started, we did not start with a desire for ministry. We did not start with a desire for fame. In fact, we did not start with a desire for greatness. This journey started from a blind and a sincere pursuit. Lord, I love you. It's an opportunity and it's a privilege for me to be called your own. And while we pressed and gave God literally everything, he said, so this is how far you can go for me. Now let me show you how far I can go for you. Are we together? Do not covet the result of a genuine lover of God if and when you are not. Mm -mm. God, why are you doing this to so-so-so person, so-so-so lady, so-so-so ministry? It is a reflection of the depth of their love for God. The Bible says, no eye has seen. Are we still together? No ear has heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has in store for them that love him, not them that use him. 
not them that use him for fame not those that use him to get publicity for ministry not those that use him and climb him as a ladder into a great life there are many men of God who do not love God clearly so there are many church members who do not love God there are many business people who do not love God there are many people with Christian names who do not love God there are biblical indices that show whether or not you love God so it is not about blind assumption and saying I love him he knows You are the thirst, you are the stream, you are the hunger living deep inside of me. You are the food that satisfies, you are provision for the journey of my life. Listen, when you say, God, I love you, you know what he's going to ask you? Let me see what you can give up for me. So be careful when you want to say, God, I love you. We are used to fake love in this, our wicked world, that we think we can play that politics with God. You don't come to him just faking tears and say, I love you. You can roll from left to right, from pillar to post. When you are done loving, he will tell you, all right, Simon Bajona, lovest thou me more than this do you love me more than ministry do you love me more than titles there are people who would throw god away to protect ministry there are people who would throw god away to protect their ego i am a man of god apostle joshua selman there are people who would throw god away if their money is falling down they would throw god and hold the money and say god you are a miracle worker rise back but this money if it falls i don't know if it will come back again There are people who will throw God away and say, my pedigree, I went to school, I read X, Y, Z. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the men and the women that God will do mighty things with in today's world are people who are dead to every other thing. The price for all of God is all of you. You've heard me say it. The price, listen, the price for all of God is more, you will need more than your brain for God to do business with you. The price for God is more than English and preaching. Oh dear one, it takes more than good English to put a generation at the command of heaven. We are discussing relationships now. Hallelujah. There are, Valentine is two days now, after now. There are many people whose lives are going to nose dive. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. But nose dive, they have not even stayed well with God. And they look forward, they are planning all kinds of things, minus God. They bought flowers, they bought, they, they paid for the venue that they will use. And there is no God in that factor. God, I'm used to you interrupting my joy. Stand back. When I need you, I'll come. This one now, it, look, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it is the foolishness of loving God that brought us this far. Never get to a point where you become too intelligent, too Western to become that baby. Hmm. Are we together? There are many people right now, it's pedigree and, pest, and prestige that has come to a point where it has replaced God and pushed God out of their lives. You know, when we started, we were poor people, no money, but now we are billionaires, we are talking serious things. My phone can't fall down, my clothes, do you know the amount? And while you talk all that nonsense, the realm of the spirit is watching you. The rich fool in one day came down, his life was even demanded from him. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. Your passion for God is not about fanatism and it's not about being a preacher. Do not leave passion for God to just pastors and preachers. 
and say me God has called me into entrepreneurship he knows that I can't love him the way who told you that go and find out the people who love God as governmental figures like Daniel as economists like Joseph they were not preachers yet you could not argue their love for God the question God is asking you right now is Simon Bajona lovest thou me more than this because the way many of us are pressing into life we're ignoring God we're just satisfied that at least I remember coming out for an altar call and I don't care about anything spiritual but if we begin to talk about money and business and rising now you are speaking my language some of you your love language is money repent <laughs> repent now listen please don't don't I'm not being sarcastic I'm serious here teaching are we together now repent You are the thirst, you are the street, you are the hunger living inside of me, you are the food that satisfies, you are provision for the journey of my life. Hallelujah. I will keep saying it for as long as I am alive. I will give up koinonia and close it down a thousand times to maintain my relationship with God. Believe me. This is not just a, an empty talk that I'm saying on stage. Are we together? Something more than gold. I've got something more than gold Something more than gold I've got something more than gold If all I have is Jesus I've got something more than gold I will tell it to the world So the first dimension of relationship you want doors to open for you it is with God with God the first dimension of relationship and let me tell you this you are here and you've not encountered the God of the Bible when I make the altar call I want you to run wherever you are just know that this is why Jesus brought you here Give us John 17 verse 3. It says, and this is eternal life, that they may know thee, not that they may recite a prayer alone. This is eternal life, that they may know thee, the only true God. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and found I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth and found that until you get to a point in your life, ladies and gentlemen, where God means everything to you, your love and your passion for Jesus, your love and your passion for the things of the Spirit has consumed you and is above every other desire, then you are not ready for the relationship that opens doors. There are men who will stand in an empty space, but because of their love for God, he will carry a door wherever it is, bring it in front of them and open it. That is how far he can go. He said, I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. It's time to return back to your love life. Thank God that this is a period that is celebrated world over. It's a, it's a period of love. Your first love is not your husband. It's not your wife. It's not your children. It was because of him that they all arrived. Don't let their presence drive him. Are we together now? Jesus. 
the lover of our soul. This is how we started. Blind, sincere, honest pursuit for him. Lord, if you never bless me, you still have my all. If you never lift me, you still have my all. Not, Lord, I'm giving you two weeks. If you don't move, don't blame me. All those kinds of things. No. I love you sincerely. It is not about preaching. It is not about all of that. No. The song we sing, they all belong to you. And even the air I breathe. your hands on your head in one minute and repent from every kind of idolatry Lord I don't know what has taken your place in my life the pursuit for things the pursuit for fame the pursuit for money the pursuit for positions cry to the Lord this night oh I return I return oh lover of my soul oh lover of my destiny I return church stole my heart from you marriage stole my heart from you a job stole my heart from you fame stole my heart from you naira and cobble and dollars and pounds stole my heart from you but I return someone cry I return I return in the name of Jesus I return Shabrekete pereko skati barus skati prende ke pereko skotu praskiata ayaka sabando shodo prekete belegeta You are praying one more minute Take all of me all of me lord you have my everything take all of me all of me you have my everything I love you more than ministry I love you more than prophecy I love you more than marriage I love you more than children I love you more than a job I love you more than business excellence I love you more than financial prosperity someone pray someone pray no destruction man of God it's time for your love for ministry to go behind the cross and never replace your love for Jesus it's time for your love for fame and power even though carrying the semblance of spirituality to go behind the cross and to see Jesus alone lifted as an expression of your love it's good to excel it's time for your love and your desire for material things to move behind in the queue that nothing and no one should sustain the ability to take his place in your life 
Oh, if I perish, let me perish loving you. If I go forward, let me go forward loving you. If I mark time, let me mark time loving you. If I rise, let me rise loving you. Everything I will ever get that will demand my not loving you, may it never come. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Now listen carefully. When Jesus started with the disciples who would later be apostles of the Lamb, he called them and they became his disciples. But as that intimacy grew, many things started happening to them. One day Jesus said, I no longer call you brethren, but friends. Is that in your Bible? He was, she was telling them something that you have scaled a height. You have demonstrated your love. You have survived a lot. Do you know what it means for God to give you a title called the friend of God? Who in the Bible had that name? And what followed the destiny that had that name? Abraham was called more than a prayer warrior, more than a fasting giant. It is a noble title for God to call you his friend because in friendship there are no secrets. There is the opening of secrets. God can beckon on you. Shall I hide this from my friend Abraham? I can hide this from my creation, but not my friend. Abraham, this is what I want to do. Let me give you a chance as a friend. And Abraham came not just as God's creation, but as a friend and said, hold on. Since you have called me your friend, allow me to negotiate. I have an interest in Sodom and Gomorrah. Someone who was my friend before, but allowed the quest for material things to drive him away because of that friendship. Remember, the guy in the room did not call him friend, but the one outside still said, for as long as there is one person still carrying that point of connection, he said, let me advocate for Lot. Perhaps if there are 50 people, perhaps if there are 40 people, that was a negotiation that was at the table of friendship. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I didn't call him more. I am a friend of God. How can I dare call him friend? The creator of the ends of the earth. But I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. So do not be surprised when you see the benefits of friendship following certain people. Do not, the Bible said there is a friend that sticketh closer. Shall I hide this? I don't know who God is speaking to, but there are people here tonight, God is saying there is a deeper level of friendship. Come, come. This nominal Christianity, this surface thing here and there, dealing with God like an idol, like a stranger, as if it's a stone carved somewhere. We serve God as if we are practicing idolatry. There is a functional relationship with proof. Come. 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 There is a river for you. Come. God is pushing someone. Come. There is a deeper dimension, more than just church, more than just nominal Christianity. It's a deeper dimension like Ezekiel 47. Oh, there is a river. God is calling a man of God. Hold on about ministry and come deeper. You will be more effective when you become my friend. Lion of Judah, the Lamb upon the throne, I hail you, Moses. 
Shema Semanadia, the Lion of Judah, the Lamb upon the throne. I hail you, Most High. I hail you, Lord. I hail you. I worship you. I hail you, Most High. My friend, whenever I call you, you me because a friend always answers when I call you you will answer me whenever I call you hear me there are some of you after this service you may need to rush and go for a retreat God is speaking to you the destiny you are seeing and the level of relationship you are giving God, you can't arrive there. That is not how a prophetic mantle will land on you. That is not how an apostolic call will come. It's not by buying suits and sharing cards. No, there are, there are rivers, ladies and gentlemen. You have to dive deep into the river. Job said there is a, there is a path that no fowl has seen. The webs of the lion has not gotten there very deep dimensions of intimacy with God that is where power resides in the spirit that is where rest resides in the spirit in your time just one more minute declare your desperation take me to the place the place you are the secret place that's where I want to be you are my sheep you are my covering you are my stability and my foundation take me to the place the place you are the secret place, the secret place. Yeah. 
not wasting your time many of you are wondering what we are doing this is how intimacy is developed in the spirit press for one more minute Yeshua Hamashiach Yeshua Hamashiach Yeshua Listen, there is a realm in the spirit where you would have surrendered everything because you love him. When your hands are empty, not holding anything, then he can hold your hands and you will find out that you have everything. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. Our mundane pursuit of things is eroding our passion for God gradually especially this generation with all due respect it is amazing how incredibly distracted we are in pursuit of many things i have learned from scripture i have learned from mentorship from wisdom and by experience that anything that claims to give you what only god can give you just know that you are dealing with fraudulence there any situation anyone who tells you he can give you what only god can give there are things only god can give he said with god all things no amount of publicity will bring increase to your ministry above and beyond the presence and your relationship with god no amount of intellectual soundness will replace the impact of the word that comes at the instance of relationship May God grant us grace to return in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Please be seated. So the first dimension of relationship is your relationship with God. Ever increasing hunger, passion, fire, love for spiritual things.